Hey everyone, Johnny here. In this video, I wanted to share with you a Blender extension that I've been working on in my spare time. Uh, I've been trying to do some new work with uh, Blender cloth simulations and trying to get a little better at using it. And I was finding there were certain tasks that I was having to do over and over again that had multiple steps that were really taking a bunch of time and taking away from me being able to work creatively. So I decided to make some macros out of these and put them into an extension that I could use quickly. So I wanted to share that with you. And um, I haven't put this into the Blender uh, extension platform yet. I haven't submitted it there. But I do have my own static extension platform uh, copy that you can connect to and download this repository through uh, the Blender extension uh, setup. So let me uh, dive right into this, show you how you can download this extension and uh, show you what it does. So in Blender, uh, I'm in version 4.4 here. And uh, if you want to install extensions now, uh, if you go to the Edit Preferences menu and go to Get Extensions, you can uh, download all of the extensions that are currently available for Blender through the extensions platform. And you can also add in your own repositories of Blender extensions. So if I go up to this repository menu and click on the Add button, I can add a remote repository. Here in the URL, I'm going to put in my GitHub extension repository link. And I'll put this down in the description so you can put it in and try it out yourself. This does point to a GitHub repository, so you can go there and check out the source code for any of this if you want to take it and use it for some ideas or whatever. Um, by all means, check it out. But if you just want to install the extension, you can put in this uh, link here. I'm going to click check for updates on startup and hit create. So I'm going to go to the search menu here and I'm going to type in quick cloth tool. And you should see it here. Um, the repository should be johnnygizmo.github.io. Once you have that on your screen, you can click the install button. That'll take just a moment to download that and uh, install it in your blender. Once it lights up like that, it's been installed. And so you can hit save preferences down here and close out your preferences window. Now you can access this add-on using the tool shelf. So we'll press N to open the tool shelf here on the right. And you'll see there's a new tab called Quick Cloth Tool. I'm going to run down through the uh, various options here real quick. So what I'll do is I'll add a plane here. And I'm going to subdivide it a bunch of times. Now, if I just want to add a cloth simulation to this, with all my vertices selected, I can just click Add. And then I get just a normal cloth simulation on that. Now, if I only wanted to simulate a part of it and have the other parts pinned, I can just go ahead and select the parts I want to simulate, hit Add Cloth Simulation, and I get what I'm looking for. From here, if I wanted to uh, remove the cloth simulation and the and the vertex groups that are uh, controlling this, I would just hit the remove button here. And uh, if I want to apply this as a modifier, I just hit the apply button. And uh, if I were to tab into edit mode on this, you can see that that simulation has been made into the actual mesh. I'm gonna hit undo a few times here. Now, if for whatever reason, I wanted uh, gravity to be different when I run this simulation, so I have this section down at the bottom, and if I want to disable gravity, I can hit this and run the simulation, and you can see that nothing's happening because there's no gravity on it. If I want uh, gravity to go up instead of down, I can do that. If I want to go left, right, or push away, or pull towards, those are all available options. And if I wanted custom gravity, I can adjust that here. This way you don't have to dig into the world adjustment panel to uh, tinker with your gravity settings and you can adjust those as you need them. So a nice thing you can do with the cloth simulation is that if it's running here and you want to change some of the parameters, 
if you hit the uh, add cloth simulation button again, you'll see that the redo panel comes up if it wasn't the last thing you'd already done. And under here, you've got all of the major settings that you would need uh, doing some quick cloth simulations like this. Of course, you can always go under the physics menu and uh, adjust every setting, but these are the ones that jumped out at me to have in the redo panel and you can change any of these uh, at any time. So say I wanted to increase the speed multiplier, I can do that right here, or any of these other settings, and uh, that will be reflected in your simulation right away. Now another thing you might need to do when you're working with cloth simulations is add in collision modifiers. So let's add in a cylinder here, and apply the scale, and I'm gonna add collision modifier to it. Now this is adding a collision modifier just like normal, um, but it does pop up this redo panel so you can quickly go in and adjust all of the settings on this instead of diving down into the physics menu, scrolling all the way to the bottom of that uh, collision modifier and finding the settings. They're just right here for you. So if I wanted to turn up the friction quite a bit, can do that and uh, straight away I get what I was what I was looking for there. Another thing you might find yourself doing is stitching together uh, clothing or some other cloth. So let me just add in a new plane here. Now of course this is a very simple setup um, but let's say you wanted to stitch here to here. Uh, in the past, what you would need to do is create loose edges between each one of these, turn on sewing, and then uh, run the simulation. And this would cinch that up together. I was finding uh, doing all of these edges to be a cumbersome process. Um, I did find some uh, multi-step uh, solutions that would create those for me. So I put those together uh, into a simple operator. So if I select these two edge loops and then say edge loops to stitch, you'll see that it creates those for me. And now if I add this cloth simulation and uh, I'm going to turn off gravity, make sure sewing is enabled and I'm just going to arrow through my animation instead of playing it. So there you see those have sewn together. Now of course those edges are still there. Um, so if I were to apply this cloth simulation and go in here, you would see that those loose edges are still in there. Um, so what I did was I added this weld loose edges uh, in here. So what this does is it adds a weld modifier and sets it to only weld together connected loose edges. So if you've got other vertices that are close together, um, it won't merge those like you were doing a merge by distance. So if you, the only loose edges you have in your mesh are those that are doing sewing, this will get rid of those. So I'll just say weld loose edges, and then if I come in here, you'll see those have been welded together. One very simple modifier that I put in here that's based off an old script that I wrote is the uh, pillow simulation. So if I have an object like this, and I wanna turn this into a pillow, this pillow simulation adds a cloth simulation with some pressure and gives you a quick pillow. I can uh, add that again and keep changing my settings um, or I can hit apply and when I do that is ready to go, ready to be sculpted, whatever. The last little modifier here is something I was playing with while I was trying to learn how to do some different uh, cloth stylings. So let's say we wanted to create a table skirt. 
So I'm just gonna create a quick table here. So I've got my table and I want to put a, and I want to put a table skirt around this. Well, what I could do is create um, create the mesh that is going to turn into that. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to add a plane. So we've got that, we'll add some subdivisions this way, and then we'll add quite a few subdivisions on all the sides. All right. I'm gonna scale this out just a little bit to give myself some more uh, room to work with. So what I wanna do is create a way for uh, this to be pulled in by every few vertices. So if I've got this top bit selected and I'm gonna hit Control I, H to hide all of the rest of the vertices and then just select these ones on the top. If I press this vert ring to alternating cinch stitch and yes, I'm terrible at naming things it may not seem like I've done a lot, but what you're gonna see here is that every fourth vertice has had an extrusion and then a new ring of loose edges has, is connecting those on the top. So if I select those ones on the top, scale them in a bit, bring them here, this. I'm going to press Alt H to bring back the rest of mine. And now with all of this in place, I'm going to select everything but that extra ring of vertices that was extruded from the top. And when I simulate this, add some gravity there. you'll see that this is uh, that this turns out relatively well. But what if I want that control ring to be very closely tied to the table? I'm going to uh, undo a little bit here. So now with just that inner control ring selected, I'm going to go into edge mode and then and then I'm going to go back to object mode. I'll select my table, then I will shift select my cloth and press the add shrink modifier. So what this will do is add a shrink wrap modifier to my active object. Its target will be the uh, inactive object and there will be a vertex group of just the selected vertices that are going to be affected. So this has the effect of pulling that control, those control vertices in against the table like this. And uh, I can apply that shrink modifier. And now if I run my cloth simulation, make sure I've got gravity turned on. I've got that. Um, so I'll apply my cloth modifier, maybe scale this up just a hair. Now, one of the things you might notice is that those control rings are still there, even though I've applied this. And if I use my delete loose edges uh, button that I have here, that will just any edges that are uh, loose and not connected uh, to a face will be deleted. So I can delete those. I'm left with my mesh here. Maybe I come in. delete off the back here, maybe add a subsurf modifier. And it gets us pretty close to where we might wanna be, something that we could very easily use the sculpt modifier to 
add some additional wrinkles or uh, smooth out some parts or grab some parts and move them around. Um, but this gets us a lot of the way there. This would be great for doing skirts. This would be great for doing curtains um, and other things like that where you want to pull in these vertices this way. The modifier does have options for how many vertices you want to skip. Uh, it has an offset so that if you don't want to start on the first vertice, you can, you can just do it that way um, and slide them around before you do. It also has the option, if you don't want to extrude that control ring, you can shut that off as well. So those are the current things that are in this extension. I'd love it if you gave it a try, see if it's helpful, see if uh, having quick access to some of these tools helps you iterate through your uh, cloth modeling process a little better instead of constantly having to go re-add cloth uh, modifiers, reset all the settings every single time. This is just a quick way to uh, do the same thing over and over and over again with just a few clicks. As always, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it inspires you to make something awesome. And until next time, I'll catch you later.